All right, this podcast is going to deal with pedigrees, and this is number three from our chapter 14. So what is a pedigree? It's a chart that traces a Mendelian trait through a family. Uh, most often it's used clinically for the study of genetic disorders, but it can be used to, to trace really any Mendelian trait. But you got to understand what the symbols are. Squares are males, and if you show the trait, then you are colored in. Um, round is females, and if you show the trait, you're colored in. I kind of remember this. Uh, this way is that guys are blockheads, and, and girls have a round figure. And that's the way that I do it. All right. Let's say we're doing like a family tree, essentially, because pedigrees are kind of like family trees. And we know that cousin Bob that lives in Australia, he's got, I know he's got at least one kid, but I don't know what it is. Well, then you use this diamond shape. And then obviously, once you figure it out, you could change it to a circle or you could change it to a square. All right. Uh, this is a, this line is called a marriage line. This is a male married to a woman. All right. This one here, this is a double line and it's called uh, consanguinous. What it really means, it's an incest, an incestual relationship. Um, often it's referred to as inbreeding. So this would be like brother and sister or close cousin um, having a, a child. All right. Now, <laughs> nice spelling. Let's just, you know, let's do this. Let's just erase that and spell that correctly. All right. Here we go. Inbreeding. Inbreeding is to be avoided because it increases homozygosity. And what that means is, is that the, the child will have the same allele from both parents. And that's not an increase in genetic variety. So in most societies, this is illegal. All right. See this vertical line right here? That's an offspring. So in this case, a husband and a wife had one son. Over here, we have a family. Uh, the firstborn was a son. The secondborn was a, uh, a daughter. And over here, we have twins. Now, these are non-identical twins or fraternal twins. Now, typically, when you have identical twins like you have down here, there's a line drawn right there. So it kind of forms a letter A. All right, so you got that line right there. Okay, so these here are fraternal. And obviously, these here are um, identical. Now, we'll have some other ones in here. So, like, if you had somebody who was adopted, um, it would be uh, in brackets. That would be an adoption. Um, let's say you have a family tree, and you got great-grandpa Bill, and, you know, he passed away. You draw a line through that. Um, often you have divorces. So you draw a line right through there. That shows a divorce. So they're really pretty basic. Okay, now this is a pedigree, and what it doesn't show in this one is different generations. So you see this one up here? That's generation number one. This row here, generation number two, and, you know, so on and so forth. And this would be individual one, so you'd be Roman numeral one, and then uh, Arabic numeral one, that individual two. Uh, second generation, one, two, three, four, five. All right, got it? Okay. Um, this shows an autosomal dominant trait. Now, remember with an autosome, it's on any of the chromosomes from 1 to 22. And we call this autosomal dominant or autosomal uh, trait because it doesn't have anything to do with the gender. It shows up in equal numbers between boys and girls. Okay. So we have a type of dwarfism. If you've ever watched the Little People Big World Show on, uh, I believe it's on the Learning Channel. Um, they have a form of dwarfism that is a um, dominant trait. Now, over here, as you see here, if you have your half covered in, you're heterozygous. Well, if you're autosomal dominant, that means you got it. So in the Lit Little People Big World show, both the mom and the dad are heterozygous. Okay, now how do I know that they're heterozygous? I'm just going to do this. Okay, well, because they have one son who's affected, but they have a lot of other children that are normal size. So they would get the recessive. So that would be, uh, you know, the one son that's normal size. And over here would be the other son who is not, no, that's a big A. We'll make that a big A. I know that's hard to see, but that's a big A. Okay. Progeria, very interesting, very rare disease where the child ages extremely rapidly. 
and you've probably have seen these individuals on certain shows. They're uh, they're like nine years old, but they look like they're ninety. You know, they don't have any hair. Um, they also they have problems with uh, old age disease. They have high cholesterol. They have heart disease. They have arthritis real bad. Uh, very rare, kind of very sad too. Okay, polydactyly. Dactyly refers to fingers. Poly means many. So this would be more than five fingers. And then obviously this one would be uh, less than five fingers. Okay, maybe they only have three, four, something like that. All right, those are also dominant traits. All right, now I do want you to point out, you see this little line right here? Okay, this guy is not related to this couple here, but he married this woman and they had this many children. All right, same thing over here. This, this is a marriage line. So this would be like this couple right here. That's a son-in-law and that's a daughter-in-law. So what if we have a recessive trait? Okay, so what, what we got here, we've got a one, there's generation two, and we have a generation three. Now in this case, you have to be homozygous to get this. All right, so let's look up here. This individual, this is heterozygous. And this person here doesn't show it, so they're that, okay? This person here does not show the disease, but heterozygous individuals, when it's recessive, are called a carrier. They carry a disease, and they can pass it on to the next generation. Okay, so as you can see down here, this individual here would be two little A's, and all of these other ones would be two little A's. So I'm just going to, if you're not colored in, you're two little A's. But if you're half colored in, okay, those are heterozygous carriers. What you can see here, this son is a carrier, and he married another carrier. And that's what leads to these individuals who have the disease. All right. Now, if you've noticed already that as I'm doing these, I'm doing these little monohybrid crosses in my head. So we already know that the lady is big A, small A. And because he doesn't have the disease at all, he's that. Okay. So he, he's not a carrier because they didn't have any kids who have the disease, plus you probably know a little bit more about his family up in here. All right? So I'm just doing these little Punnett squares in my head to figure out what all these letters are. Okay, here are some traits that are inherited in this fashion. Okay, albinism means that you make, you have no skin pigment, so you have very light skin, the pink eyes, and the very white blonde hair. Okay, cystic fibrosis, we're going to go over this one in a little bit detail, another one. Um, this is a genetic disease that's common of people of European descent, and uh, basically you have a problem with an ion channel, and this causes a very thick mucus. Okay, phenylketonuria, as you can see, PKU for short. Um, individuals who have this, they cannot metabolize uh, uh, phenyl, uh, phenylketone something. Uh, Phenylalanine, something like that. I don't remember off the top of my head. But there's a certain there's a certain amino acid that they have a struggle uh, metabolizing, and that causes some serious problems. Now, if you know you have PKU, if you keep that amino acid out of your diet, you're good to go. You'll have no symptoms. But if you eat it, you have some serious, serious troubles. Okay? Now, we do have the project where you have to do a pedigree of your family. I've already given you instructions for that. Um, you can find them on our Moodle website if, if you've lost them. Um, really interesting and kind of fun to see how all the relationships are. All right, so have fun with that assignment. It's really, really neat to see, you know, how a trait goes through your family. All right. And that'll conclude this podcast.